Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. My name is Madison and I am the reserved wife here on YouTube as well as Instagram and TikTok. I am so excited for today's video. I'm going to be taking you guys along while I bake and cook. I'm going to be baking some cookies for my sister as well as some potato soup that my husband and I are going to be having for dinner. I am so excited to share these recipes with you guys. They are our favorites. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you are enjoying this content as much as I am making it. I hope you guys enjoy today's video and let's get into it. So I got my apron on. I'm also going to be pulling my hair back. We wouldn't want to get any hair into the cookies I'm going to be giving away. So if you have long hair while you're baking or cooking, I always recommend to pull it back. My hair isn't long enough to really fit in a ponytail or bun, but we are going to make it work. <laughs> this recipe is so easy, you guys. Anybody could make it. This is a really great beginner baking recipe if you want to slowly start getting into baking. So the first two ingredients that we are going to need is some cream cheese. So we aren't going to be using this whole block of cream cheese. I'm only going to be needing four ounces. Um, if you guys don't know this, or if you're new to baking, the ounces are on here, so it makes it really easy to just cut what you need. Perfect. So usually the ideal situation is you will take <laughs> the cream cheese and butter out to soften throughout the day, but whereas my sister requested these last minute, we're going to kind of have to improvise. So I have a small bowl right here that I'm going to put the cream cheese in to kind of let it melt a little bit in the microwave. You don't want the cream cheese melted, so I'm going to put it in the microwave for 10 seconds at first and check it and kind of add another 10 seconds if we need it to be a little bit longer. Also softened the butter in the microwave as well. Like I said, um, preferably you will have the cream cheese and butter sitting out during the day so it can soften that way. But if you're, in a, if you're in a pinch like I am, you can use the microwave. So I am using a KitchenAid stand mixer. If you do not have a stand mixer, that is fine. You could use um, a hand mixer, but you will probably need to use a wooden spoon to kind of knead the dough with the flour. Okay, so first we are going to put the cream cheese in the bowl. I'm gonna use this wooden spoon to kind of scrape it out. And we're also going to add the softened butter as well. Hopefully, I'm going, to act, I'm going to actually roll up my sleeves a little bit so I don't get anything on my clothes. I usually prefer to bake in short sleeve shirts, but it is freezing here today, so that was not going to happen. I move my stand over here and we are going to combine the butter and cream cheese and I'll show you guys the consistency you want. Okay, perfect. So this is the consistency you are going to want with that. A very smooth consistency, almost the texture of a frosting. Okay, now you're going to want half a cup and three tablespoons of some white granulated sugar. So right now I'm going to be using a fourth cup and half a tablespoon because that is all I have clean at the moment, but I will be making it into the half cup and so on. We are going to combine that until we can get that smooth consistency again. Perfect, that is beautiful. Okay, so this is what we have right now. Like I said, it has the kind of texture and consistency of frosting. So that is what you want. Okay, now you're going to want one cup and three tablespoons of flour, and we're going to add that in slowly. Um, most of my measuring cups are dirty, and um, they're in the washer, the dishwasher right now, so I am just going to use my fourth cup. I'm going to add a half a cup first to kind of slowly add it in, and then we'll add the other half. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to add the other half cup of flour. 
and repeat. Okay, perfect. And this is all that we need to do for this dough. We are going to let it chill, however. So I'm going to kind of clean this off. Okay, before I put it in the fridge to chill, I'm going to taste the dough to make sure I have everything how I want it to taste. Perfect. I'm going to put it in this small glass bowl and let it chill in the fridge for at least 45 minutes. Um, for the best outcome, you're going to want two hours, but I have tried it at two hours and 45 minutes and both have it worked out just fine. So this is what that dough looks like. Okay, I'm going to let this chill in the fridge. I'm going to set my timer for 45 minutes and check it then. And if I feel like it needs to chill a little longer, I will let it. Okay, we are back. The dough has chilled for a little over 45 minutes and we are gonna start making the cookies. I am going to put a little warning. <laughs> my daughter just woke up from her nap and she is eating right here beside me. So if you hear little squeaks and giggles and <laughs> her talking and making funny noises, I'm sorry, but mom life. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to spray my pan. I have the oven preheating to 375 right now while I do this too. The dough chilled perfectly. It's not as soft anymore, but it is not too stiff, which is what we want. Okay. I'm going to roll them out really fast. I want about that size. You can go a little bigger or a little smaller, depending on what you like. Okay, now that these are all done, I'm going to tell you the reason these are called thumbprint cookies. You're going to take your thumb and you're going to make a little hole in the center of the dough. Just like that. And you can fill these with whatever kind of filling you want. I prefer the red raspberry jam. I think it pairs really well with the cream cheese in the dough. So I'm going to fill it with some of this raspberry jam as well as some Nutella. So I'm going to go jelly, Nutella, jelly, Nutella, jelly. So let's start filling them. I just realized that a second row was supposed to be Nutella, but that is okay. We'll just add two layers of the Nutella. And this is what they look like. The Nutella ones are not as pretty as the raspberry jam ones, but that is okay. They will still taste great. I'm going to put these in the oven for nine to 11 minutes. I tend to go more to nine minutes, but we'll check them and see if they need to be cooked longer. Okay, while those cookies bake, I'm going to be prepping some vegetables. Okay, the cookies are done and I wanna show you guys the finished product. This is the Nutella one, a little messy. This is the raspberry jam one. I'm going to taste test one of the Nutella ones. I've actually never had um, a Nutella one. I made them last Sunday for my family and I didn't get to try the Nutella ones because they were all gone. <laughs> so, let's taste test it. It's good. I mean, I think I like the raspberry jam one a little bit better, 
but Nutella is really, really good too. So you'll have to try both. Okay, so now that the cookies are done, it is time to start cooking some dinner. I'm going to be making a cheesy potato soup. And I'm so excited, so let's just dive right in and start cooking. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This is, has been one of my favorite videos to film. It was so fun. I hope you guys enjoy the recipes. I will leave them linked in the description box below. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.